What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today we're actually at a new car shop. It's Emmett's. Uh, you guys have probably seen this in some of my videos recently. Check out the, uh, I just want to show that off. Honestly, I think it's a really cool mural. But um, today we're going to get into the meat and bones of things or meat and potatoes. I think that's what they call it. But we're doing Orcus Horus. Now, Orcus Harpoor actually just came back to three on the most recent ban list. And if you guys don't know, one of my decks that I was really, really successful with back in the day, this was back in like, what, 20... What was Orcus good? 2018? Something like that. Yeah, 2018. Um, it was Orcus. And, and Orcus is a deck that I've loved. And I'm really excited because Harpoor coming back to three makes the deck super, super consistent. And with the Horus package specifically in today's day and age, this is a more modernized build. And it's a very, very powerful deck. So with that being said, let's get right into it. But make sure to like and subscribe. There's going to be a ton of post balance content coming soon all right so let's get right into it first things first we're playing three orcus harpora of course it is now back at three this is the main card of your deck it gets a lot of your play started being able to foolish burial this being able to get it to your graveyard with armageddon knight there are so many ways now because armageddon knight also came off the balance at two which is crazy so being able to get this in your graveyard sets up so many of your combos and it's your main combo starter and your main combo piece so three harpora 100 you also don't lose super hard to bestials anymore because essentially what happened with this is when it was at one bestials kind of like ruined it obliterated it, to be honest with you but now that you have it at three it's a lot stronger right so that's why we're definitely playing three harpoor we're of course also playing three girsu girsu is the most important name that's your normal summon i guess you could say it's really your only normal summon outside of armageddon knight and uh it just starts a lot of your plays as well so three girsu of course you got to be playing three and then for the rest of the package we're playing two skeleton playing two nightmare and one world one so this actually used to be a three of when this was at one but now that this is back at three i actually just like playing the two nightmare this is a card that you can of course recur in different ways and uh, you don't need to be playing three anymore honestly just with, with this back at three this at two is perfectly fine you don't want to be really be breaking on these honestly if the if you're going to open a name the name that you want to open is gear suit the second name you want to open is probably harp horror outside of these two you ideally don't want to draw these as much you want to get to them through your combo right so that's why we're really cutting down on the names with harp horror back at three this is all you're going to need there is even an argument to play one of this i just like playing two because i don't want to just lose the one and then you're kind of playing uh, a losing battle right an uphill battle that's why i like playing two of this still then to round it off we're playing one babble one return and one crescendo this is pretty standard there was a situation where i was actually thinking of playing two crescendo crescendo is actually really good the graveyard effect is actually really good but uh i i think just playing one is good you want to you want to go first you don't, ideally don't even want to draw this so that's why we're only just playing the one and i think i think it's perfectly fine but that's it for the orcus engine over here harpoor coming back to three absolutely insane makes this engine super super consistent so that's why we're playing that and then of course we're modernizing orcus we're playing the horse package so three imseti one happy one drama turf as well as a three king sark now this engine is insane of course because it gets all your orcus cards in uh, into the graveyard so like i said you don't want to draw these names per se but if you do draw these names it's not the end of the world because you're always going to be getting to the graveyard with these cards which is absolutely insane harpoor of course again is still the best one to to get going but you draw a nightmare it's still perfectly fine you draw any of the other names it's still perfectly fine and then this also gives you access to a lot of cards in the extra deck that's just absolutely powerful so that's why being able to set up boards you can set up rank eights you can uh gain you know turns two and turns three it's really powerful as well because they help you push for damage in otk that's why i really really like this engine and then lastly i guess for another quote-unquote engine two armageddon knight one foolish burial the reason we're playing these of course i'm gonna night now back at two is absolutely insane gives you another normal summon in the deck that's not just gear suit and it sets up a lot of your plays because just armageddon knight means you can foolish this and then you can get a lot of your combo started off just with this card right so that's why armageddon knight coming back to two absolutely insane buff for this deck and then foolish burial of course is just your third armageddon knight getting your harpoor to the graveyard but honestly even even if it's not harpoor it could be any other of uh, the orcus names of course which is really really good so that's it for the quote-unquote engines and then of course we're playing all the power cards right so called by the grave really really good i think in today's format just against any hand traps is always going to be good i like playing three fenrir so fenrir is actually really good as well because being able to start a lot of your combos or being able to start your turn off just by summoning a fenrir this card is just pretty good in today's format in general but if it's not just this it's it gets you an extra card to your hand so if you need more discard fodder for the horse cards you have that discard fodder here and then if anything it's just a board breaker for you when you're forced to go second and then we're of course also playing a ton of hand traps so we're playing a three ash three bell, three nib, and three imperm. So the reason I want to play these ratios, specifically bell, I want to talk about imperm ash, generically just the best hand traps. Imperm lib is also really, really good going second. And a really cool interaction with Nibiru that I want to talk about as well is uh, with this deck going first as well, not just going second. Going second, of course, it's insane. But going first is really good because let's say you set up a board, right? And your opponent's going to break your board, whatever, they're, they're comboing off, they're doing their thing. You can activate Nibiru. And then if you have like, let's say a Babel on board, you can chain something like your Orcus Nightmare, let's just say, right? And what this does is it locks you into darks. And so what ends up happening is this is going to attempt to resolve as much as possible. So it's still going to tribute the entire board. It's going to break your opponent's board. But then you don't actually have to summon a token to their side of the field or you summon the Nibiru uh, 
on your side of the field either so essentially you're just nuking the whole board with this combo so it's not really a combo i would say it's more of just a cool interaction but then bell is really important as well because i am scared of basils we're scared of anything that kind of hits the back row and then fire is still with the best deck let's be honest um i think i said back row i meant graveyard but uh yeah fire is still the best deck and and bell's really good into the fire matchup as well this could be droll it could be valor but i think specifically in this deck bell just makes a lot of sense so that's it for our hand traps and that's it for the main deck i think it's 41 in the main deck honestly you can maybe cut it to 40 cut this cut this and you just play 40 on the dot but i think 41 is perfectly fine especially with all the surge power and all the uh consistency with this deck right then moving on to the extra deck honestly pretty standard two dingirsu two galatea one long girsu i guess these are standard ratios there's not really much to explain one dark one ip one sp one unicorn and one access code this could potentially be a boral sword if you guys wanted to i just really like the access code package uh one appaloosa as well and then because of course you're playing the horse package you're playing the one number 90 the num one number 38 this is really good because you can make that as your rank eights and if you open your horse package and no orcus monsters this is where this gets really good because it just gets a bunch of monsters to your graveyard so uh one zombie vampire and then one zeus of course now these cards i kind of want to talk about a little bit further when we get into the side deck because i think it's going to make a lot more sense especially with the how the list is looking right now there's something that happened that of course we all know and that's colossus coming back right and so because colossus came back this deck i i man i just don't want to deal with colossus i hate that card so we're playing these okay these are really good because one you're just taking your opponent's colossus and you're not actually locked in by the way this is a side deck right so in the side deck you're playing these cards and they're really good into colossus because you can just take your opponent's colossus so you're not like stuck kind of thing right now why these are really good is the colossus happens to be a level eight so in tandem with any horus monster you use your opponent's colossus make one of these it's really really good right or make this right or you can just link it off obviously so you don't have to just put, make these you can link it off as well but i just really like these cards because i'm really not trying to deal with colossus these cards are absolutely insane and then for the rest of the side deck we're playing uh, two panker tops we're playing the one harpies two lightning storm i just think going second these are just the best cards to be playing right now uh really good into pretty much everything you're also not worried about anti-spell anymore it's at one so anti-spell spell being at one means you can pretty much always resolve these then um this is also post lead this is something i didn't talk about earlier but essentially this deck obviously is post banlist but lead is also coming out in like a week or two so at this point you might as well uh, prep for it and i think tempai is going to be one of the best decks if this is not like if tempai is not actually that good in the tcg you guys can cut these and play something like d barrier d barrier could be really good especially into the branded matchups and, and whatnot it's technically good into tempai as well so these could be the barrier as well, but you know, I'm just scared of Tenpai for now. Lastly, we're playing three Solemn Judgment, just the best going first card in the game. So that's it for the deck. Um, that's it for the main deck side deck. And I always want to say this with my side decks. Side decks are always up to personal preference. If you guys go to a locals and your locals is all back row players, make sure you side more for back row. Some more combo players, make sure you side for combo as well. But uh, yeah, that's Orcus, man. I think Orcus is going to be a really fun deck in today's format. I don't know if it's... So I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if it's going to be a top tier contender. I think it's definitely be a tier a tier 1.5 maybe tier 2 but it could be tier 1 this deck is so consistent now with hardcore back at 3 and uh it's really tough they got rid of a lot of the omni negates so getting rid of a lot of the omni negates essentially fixed what this deck struggles with the most which is going second but now that your opponent is not ending on savage or baron it's a lot easier to actually play this going second so a lot of cool options but uh that's it for the deck profile thank you guys all for watching i always appreciate every single one of you Thank you, Alpha, for being the best cameraman on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. Tons of post list content come. Actually, I want to show you guys what the next video is. I'll just might as well show it to you guys now. Yeah, this is actually insane. Striker's insane. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned in for that. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing up. Peace.